lot of churches say all are welcome on the front sign and, and mean it to a degree. Um, but here at Holy Spirit, we've really taken that to the next level of uh, really engaging in a, a welcoming ministry. Not only are we all a welcoming church, in, and I'm sure you've heard that a, a lot, um, when we say all are welcome, all are welcome. <laughs> We heard about the Reformation Challenge first from kind of the ELCIC National Church and realized that it was something we wanted to take part in. Um, for myself and my partner in ministry, Trish Schmermond, uh, it's important to think about the Reformation not just as something that has happened, but something that continues to happen. Well, yes, of course we will do this, right? Um, we're, we're, you've probably heard this before, but our congregation is, it's a Lutheran congregation, but has a lot of people in it who didn't necessarily come from Lutheran roots. Uh, and so I think we have that sort of ecumenical diversity in the congregation as well. But this, these challenges are challenges that go along with the Reformation, um, um, but are about you know, doing the right things in the world and, and, uh, and in our mission as a church. For us, the most exciting one was the tree planting right off the bat. It was the one that a lot of people seemed uh, to get behind and it was our first project. So um, we kind of set forth our goal and uh, various members came forth to sponsor trees. And as they did that, they would put a paper clip in a local bucket and some other members started crocheting little leaves. We committed to, as a congregation, being responsible for planting 500 trees during the, the year from Reformation 2016 to Reformation uh, 2017. I know it's rich because it's, I think, $1,400 per scholarship. But we're thinking if we can do some special Sundays or even a loony drive, you know, loonies for learning or something like catchy like that, uh, then we can at least start. And if we don't make 1400, well, we don't make 1400, but, but at least we'd have started. As a Christian community, uh, we can't not respond to, to innocent sufferings. And so um, we held a meeting, and I think the first night, 25 people showed up. But I've never seen, I've been part of this church for a long time and I've never seen that level of interest before. Um, so I think God was speaking to us and um, saying, hey, my, my people are hurting and you need to do something about it. Sometimes we're called to our own adventures and the, the ways God's calling us for individual communities, um, but there's times when we're called to kind of a larger work together. And this seemed kind of like an easy no-brainer to engage in that ministry that so many other congregations are engaged with across Canada. And we'd also share in that common experience, whether it's through planting trees or raising funds for a scholarship or helping local refugee families. For me, this is a hugely emotional issue. If we ignore the humanity in someone else, how can you choose who is God's child? How do you have the right to choose that? Um, so, you know, Jesus said not, and I misquote, so please put somebody else's voice in here, <laughs> Jew, nor Greek, nor slave, nor free. We, we are called to serve everybody. There is no, this artificial barrier we put between human beings is wrong. Go ahead, take the challenge.